okay? Okay, this is your brain. Your brain responds to the electromagnetic field. Let's start here. The electromagnetic field goes so far in either direction. Thanks, Austin. That this tiny percentage of colors that we see from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers is zero. Where are we going to put this? Let's put this here. This portion that we see is so small, it's 0.0035% of the electromagnetic field that comes from the light, okay? So this is a tiny portion, unless you're someone very special with full-blown synesthesia, that's all you get to see, right? There are some synesthetes in the room, right? But for the rest of you, for the rest of the average population, that's all you get to see every day. And we evolved as beings, our tiny little bacteria, out of the ocean, okay? So with these little flagellated bacteria that could walk around and bump into things and redirect and they had to eat and they had to reproduce and that was all they did. And eventually they evolved into us, which are beings that get up and walk around powered by what? We're powered by ATP. And that ATP is made by mitochondria that perform something called fusion and fission. Oops, not T. Mitochondria. So they're making this. So when I say your brain has the highest density of mitochondria, there's a few thousand mitochondria per each cell in here. Number two is your heart, right? There's a couple thousand in here. Number three is all of your immune cells. So you've got these white blood cells and then last is your, uh, musculus, your muscles and your bones. But what I leave out when I say that is we have this thing inside of us called an ovary. And guys, you don't have this. Sorry, you're not so lucky. But an ovary, Nick, if you're in here, each egg, get this, it has between 100 and 600,000 mitochondria that line up Hi, Antonella. So an egg <clears throat> has between 100 and 600,000 mitochondria that are creating an electromagnetic field, okay? So that's what most doctors don't get to make ATP. So what do you think happens? We're going to go to the paper. When that Higgs field from that sperm hits this Higgs field and you got a power generator that has up to 600,000 batteries in it and each battery... Let's get even more detailed. Each battery has cristae. So it's got these folds, right? For those scientists in the room, you've seen pictures of this. Each of these is working like an independent battery, like a Tesla car. So can you imagine the jump start when that sperm hits that egg and those 600,000 mitochondria, each of which has its own individual battery called cristae, and they line up by fusion for quantum entangled electromagnetic radiation. Think about that. Okay, so we digressed a little bit because I promised I was just gonna talk about light. Okay, so you've got the sun as it comes over the horizon and the sun as it sets. And that's where the seven colors of the rainbow come from, right? So in the middle of the day, in what we call our vitamin, vitamin D window, I should be writing in purple now, this thing right there, those seven colors of the rainbow, literally turn on their side. And in the brightest sun of the day, this is when you make vitamin D. You make vitamin D on your skin from ultraviolet B. B as in boy makes D. Hi, Hala. Light. In this window is also UVA. So if you're using D Minder app, UVA makes nitric oxide, which makes you open your capillaries or dilate your capillaries so you drop your blood pressure. So the red light, the 700 nanometer light, right, Holly, is present all day long. The blue light only comes out, the ultraviolet A and B, and we can't see it, but we feel it, and we use it to make these things, comes out here. So it goes like this. Blue, right, green, yellow, orange. 
So vitamin D, I talked about this in the pool, but I didn't have a picture on Saturday. Vitamin D is the blood marker or the biomarker that you have gotten all seven colors of the rainbow, all of these guys standing on end. Does that make sense? So <clears throat> if you have a low vitamin D, I know that you didn't get any of the color that you needed. It means that you didn't get any of those frequencies. Now, how does that tie into mitochondria? Okay, how does that tie into mitochondria? So there is an electron excitation, meaning these molecules in our brain, our dopamine, our POMC, our melatonin, it's all getting an excitation from the light through our eye and the light through our skin. So in essence, our skin is acting like a photovoltaic cell or a solar panel or another brain some people call it a brain because it regulates our hypothalamic pituitary axis, our hormone axis. So we've got this clock in our brain that's reading all these signals from the light, directing traffic to these mitochondria to tell them how much energy to make. Does that make sense? Is everybody understanding? So my main focus was just to explain vitamin D, that it's not just vitamin D. If you have a low vitamin D, it means you missed out on, look, you only get to see 0.0035% of the rainbow unless you have full-blown synesthesia. Then you're in a different category, right, Sanctendo? But if all you get to see, all you have out of the ocean to see from billions of years of evolution is this, and you don't go outside, and what does this represent? This represents a computer screen. Bam. Okay. So if, if our pea brains only evolved to see 0.0035%, number one, what the heck else is going on in the other percent, right? The 99.65% or however much that is that we don't get to see. What else is going on out there in the world, number one? Hi, Jamie. <clears throat> Hi, Serena. Number two, you have to take advantage of that. And in our modern... Jenna, girl, how are you? In our modern society... We don't see it. So, hi, Jane. So when you stare at your screen all day, every day, that is almost as bright as the middle of the day sun, you just obliterated all of that signaling that's telling those mitochondria, which you need in your brain to make you feel healthy, how to, how to run the show, which means you just disrupted your autophagy, which is your cell cleaning, and your apoptosis just by what you put in your eye. <coughs> so we didn't, <coughs> excuse me, talk about what the other inputs to these guys are. And maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Hi, thank you, Elizabeth. Good for you. So the other inputs to these guys are food or electrons from food. Stress. Right? And then there's things like chemotherapy and fluoroquinolones and all the bad stuff that can hurt them. But it's not just one isolated mitochondria. They line up and they talk to each other through quantum entanglement or through electron spin and quantum coherence, which means basically what's in one is in the whole. Kind of a spiritual talk if you think about it. And then if you think about a baby inside of a mother... It really gets interesting. <clears throat> right, Austin? Okay, so the, the takeaway points are your vitamin D level is a reflection of how much vitamin B, I'm sorry, UVB sunlight you've gotten. But your UVB sunlight, because it comes from ultraviolet B, so ultraviolet B sits over here, A and B sit over here, infrared sits here. So if you're checking vitamin D, it, the beginning of quantum entanglement when that baby's inside of you, right, Yoza? Right, Serena? That's the spark that is real light. Um, your ultraviolet B is your marker for all of the light. All of the light. Get it? All of, all of the light. So it doesn't just mean you're deficient in ultraviolet B. It means you're deficient in ultraviolet A. Ultraviolet 
B means you're going to be low in vitamin D, and vitamin D comes from LDL cholesterol. That's how you lower your cholesterol. That's why we have an epidemic of people with high cholesterol. And we have an epidemic of people with high cholesterol who've put too much sugar in their body. So the plaque sits in their vessel. Hi, Nick. The plaque sits in their vessel, forms inflammation, gets disrupted when the vessel relaxes, and they have a heart attack or stroke. And then we have <clears throat> people with not enough UVA. Oh, you must have gotten in trouble, Nick. What'd you do? Um, I've been there. You'll get out of jail soon. <clears throat> then we have people who don't get enough UVA. If you're not getting UVB, you're not getting UVA, which means trouble with blood pressure. You're not getting all the other colors. So we talked... Um, Yesterday I did a post about how the um, NADH on the first enzyme complex in the mitochondrial membrane receives the light, uh, UV light, or it's receptive, I guess you could say, or responsive to UV light. So everything is tied to light. And I think when people leave me and they go home and try to explain it to their families because it has to do with quantum entanglement and physics and spin of electrons, it doesn't make sense. But hopefully, hi Whitney, hopefully I just said it in a way that you guys can relate to. So summary... Vitamin D is a marker for all of the light that you got all summer long. And when it's low, taking it as a pill, it can have some downstream effects, but it, you don't get the physics effect of the energy from all of the light that you need. Okay? Okay, hope that helps. Have a good night. Bye.